U.S. officials at home and abroad increasing the urgency for more military assistance to Ukraine. President Biden will see firsthand tomorrow how some of the missiles his administration has sent to Ukraine are made in hopes of getting more money from Congress. You probably remember two months ago we spoke with Anne, an exchange student from Ukraine who lived in Idaloo with the host family for a year. We spoke with her just as the Russians began invading Ukraine when she made it safely to Poland. Our Ryan Chandler joins us now and Ryan just days ago she made the tough decision to return back home. That's right, she is home for a short time now, but the home that she returned to is not the one she left. She took us through her new reality today, showing us firsthand life at a standstill in central Ukraine. And she hopes that I was her fellow worried. Texans will also stand with her people. I was worried when I had to go home, but at the same time, it was kind of inspiring for me. As Anne boarded the overnight bus that would take her back past the border of war, she thought she would be alone. What she found instead was a bus packed with women and children just as eager to go home. They were tired of being abroad. They were tired of being alone. That feeling of being home, that feeling of being in your house. We say in Ukraine, your house is like your castle and you have to protect it. But the home she found was not the same. She took us on a drive through her hometown of Uman today. Even in this small city of relative safety, Anti-tank barricades blocked the streets and cars lined them for blocks, hoping to get a small ration of petrol. The shortages of gas, groceries and jobs have her community longing for normalcy. You go in the street and you don't see smiles. Actually, you don't see happy people um, because everybody feels that in for that situation. Yes, people get used to alarms and so on and explosions, but it's still it's not the same. But through the shortages of commodities, an abundance of compassion. Uman is the safe center for Ukrainians fleeing the decimated cities in the south and east, like Donetsk, Luhansk, and Mariupol. A refugee herself, and returned to find her family helping others. I know the family who came from uh, right away from Mariupol. They were looking here for help, they were looking for clothes. And my mom, I still was in Poland, and my mom took uh, pretty much all my clothes which I had here and gave it uh, because they also have a 17 year old daughter. Her host family in Idaloo also extending their care and says they've offered to have her at her old Texas home. And she says the help of all Americans can help them get through. What I will say to Texan people firstly, that uh, thank you for hosting all people and actually keep doing it because we need your help, uh, we need your support. We need your even belief, spread uh, true information and uh, actually just talk about this because this uh, history should be written and should be written in the right way. She can't stay home for long. Residents still inside Ukraine worry Russia will mount their largest attack yet on May 9th, Russia's Victory Day. The symbolism they fear will play into Putin's strategy. But Anne is convinced they will be the ones to celebrate victory. I just understand that this war has an impact on me. I have changed a lot, but we will win and we will wait until the, uh, the war will be over and um, we'll celebrate it. And, and her mom will return back to safety in Poland, where they will reunite with her brother. Her father, however, is not allowed to leave, but they hope to all be together again soon.